hey, got you thinking, huh? Must be, I find a lot of interest in all these churches and everything. One of the questions that come up is how many women that actually started churches? We know the men did a lot. Well, for one thing, the Seventh-day Adventist Church was started by a woman named Ellen G. White. Uh, of course, we know that, that Mary a uh, Baker Eddy started the uh, Christian Science. And, uh, oh no, there are several women that have had a lot to do with the church. I think the biggest uh, religion that, that is inspired by a woman, even though they don't give her any credit, is the Islamic religion, the Muslim. Without uh, old Muhammad's wife, there wouldn't be one. And his uncle. His uncle was a big warlord, and, and uh, he used him to reinforce all the teaching that he wanted to, to put out in, in the public uh, for his what he was doing. Interesting enough, we talked a little bit last week about Joseph Smith with the LDS Mormons and how quickly he interpreted uh, the Book of Mormon and, and all that into uh, printed material by the scribes in two days. Well, uh, Muhammad had a little bit different thing. You know, he had scribes all right that, that helped him write it out, but it took him several years to interpret the, the, uh, the Koran so that people could uh, study. He made a lot of changes, and it's an interesting thing about his changes. Uh, there's so many contradictions in the Koran, and the difference is he simply said, well, later on, if I make a change, follow the change, don't follow the original writing. Well, there never is two truths. Truth is truth, and the basic truths never change. I will admit, the understanding of truth can change. Your understanding of change, and that's what this is all about. We're trying to get you to think for yourself so that you'll understand your truths a lot better for you. You can make a better decision. Let's go back to, uh, to Ellen G. White and, and the uh, the Seventh-day Adventist, uh, one of the things that she changed, she, in her reading and studying of the original Bible, the, the religion of the Jews, why, she said that they studied, they uh, practiced only on the Sabbath day. Well, in those days, the day was me measured from sundown to sundown, meaning from Friday night, sundown Friday night, till sundown Saturday night, that was their Sabbath, and that was the day to, to force the religion on. Well, they have some good and they have some questionable things in all religions, and the Seventh-day Adventists have theirs. Uh, a friend of mine who was a Seventh-day Adventist uh, used to say, I like the idea of having a day to pray and a day to play. Well, we have that in every Christian religion. If you take Saturday off, you can play, and then you need to pray. Sometimes they think they need to pray extra hard after they play a little hard. But, you know, that's the neither here nor there. God doesn't reward or punish anymore. God created the big picture and left you and me to fill in the little details of our life. He gave us the power to reward and to punish ourselves. Believe me, we do it. We At least we punish ourselves a lot, don't we? Well, you know, if you think about all these things, all that truth, all that wisdom is within you. Didn't get to cover many of the religions today, but we'll get another one next week. And each week we'll get one and we'll talk about it. But if you really want one and you want to know more, go on Google, on the internet, and find out. Uh, put it in, type it in there. You can get more information than you want, as I said before. And thank you for letting me share a little of the little that I know today with you. God bless.